What's up, everybody? We're back with another live edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. And you know what? Before we start, because I'm going to forget. I know who I am. I'm going to forget. Now we're officially live. All right. So what we got on the docket here today, whether you're watching this live, whether you're watching this later, or on YouTube, or with Avada, or whatever. Basically, today I'm going to be filling out a March Madness bracket live. Um, yeah, yesterday was Selection Sunday. Today, of course, next few days people are going to be filling out their brackets. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to do my live here today. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact, after the live, or whatever, come through. Sometimes we go live. Um, honestly, i got to get better at planning them in advance. I feel like I kind of say them a little bit too, you know, last second or whatever. But I'm going to try to be better at that so we can, you know, get a better scheduling and stuff like that. But we're going to go live. And we're doing a March Madness bracket. So I got one pulled up. And we're going to get into it. Um, if you're new around here or whatever, if you like the content, consider subscribing. Like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. Join the membership that just opened up. I got a video explaining all that. And, um, yeah, let's get right into it i'm not a college expert at all nowhere near close to a college basketball expert or whatever so you know i'm not jay billis out here you know so don't take my picks and stuff to heart or too seriously this is really just for funny than the day you know because why not fill out a bracket so start off round of 64 starting the east region we got the 116 match of yukon versus stetson now yukon of course are the reigning champs they are the number one overall seed in the tournament Looking at some of their, you know, stuff I wrote down. I literally wrote down something for, like, every single region. Uh, so what I have here, they're 31-3. and three. They won the Big East outright, the tournament and the regular season. Ken Palm, which if you don't know what Ken Palm is, it's basically, like, you know, you go to NBA.com, you go to the advanced stats, you go to, like, offensive rating, defensive rating, stuff like that. That's basically what it is for college basketball. And for Ken Palm, the ratings, they are the number one team in the entirety of college basketball. They have the number one offense in college basketball and a number 11 defense so yeah they're a real tough challenge and they honestly have a really 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 good shot of going back to back um in terms of winning it but for the first round matchup they're playing against stetson and a shout out to stetson you know they made the tournament for the first time in program history and what the first time in like 52 year program history they made the tournament they won their conference which was the a sun they won the a sun conference championship uh, the corner of Kempon, they're one of the worst team, number 218 team. Um, they're 16 seed. They do have Jalen Blackman. Shout out to Jalen Blackman. Uh, he put up 40 points in their championship game. He's their star player, averages over 21 and a half points per game, so they have him. But also, looking at some of the ratings and stats, out of every team that all the 68 teams that made the NCAA tournament, Stetson I think has the worst defensive rating. <laughs> they have the worst defense in the entire 68 team field. Going up, going up against UConn, who has the number one offense. So, yeah, we're going UConn, going to the round of 32, um, getting by Stetson in their first round matchup. Now we got an 8-9 matchup. Out here we got an 8-9 matchup. We got FAU and Northwestern. Um, this is a tough one. FAU, of course, they made the NCAA tournament last year. They made the Final Four last year. They have a good team. They got John L. Davis, uh, Vlad Golden. Their big man is really good, Elijah Martin. They have basically the same team that they had last year, you know, in the um, going back for another run. And then we have Northwestern, the number nine spot uh, in the Big Ten. They have Bo Bowie. Bo Bowie is their star player. He averages over 19 points per game, three rebounds, five assists. A steal. He shoots really well from the field as well. Uh, this is a really interesting game. Both these teams are kind of good. Like Florida Atlantic is more of an offensive type of team. Both these teams are more offensive type of teams. But I'm gonna go FAU for the first round match. I'm gonna go FAU for the you know the um, the experience they have. They have experience. Um, made it to the final four last year. I think that experience could come into play here. I think it's gonna be a really good game. Eight nines are usually the hardest to pick. I'm gonna go FAU though. Next we got the five twelve San Diego State UAB. Uh, San Diego State they lost in their championship game in the Mountain West to New Mexico State or no New Mexico. Uh, they're a top 10 defense in terms of Ken Palm. They're number 21 team. They have Jaden Ledee is your star guy, averaging 21, 8, and assists to steal. He shoots 55%, 41% from three. He's your star player. You know, San Diego State's a tough team. And then at 12, you have UAB. They won the AAC tournament. They won their tournament championship. Um, they're led by Yaxo Lendenberg and Eric Gaines. Other star players you also have Alejandro Vasquez, 
who had 30 in their championship game. They're a good team. They're offense, more of an offense oriented team. Five twelves are also, I think, pretty hard. Um, I think I'm gonna go with San Diego State though. Because I like I like Jaden Lee D. I like that they're a really good defensive team, and again, they also have experience from last year's, you know, championship. Next we have Auburn Yale, four thirteen matchup. Auburn, they won the SEC tournament. Uh they're really dominant. They're one of the best teams overall in general. Ken Palm has them as the number four team in the nation. They have a top 10 offense and a top five defense. Johnny Broom has been really good, averaging 16 and 8 with two blocks. Jalen Williams, you know, they have a really, really, really tough team. Defensive team. Bruce Pearl knows how to coach them down there. And so that's going to be a very interesting matchup as they play us off against 13 Yale. They won the Ivy League tournament. Um, they have Danny Wolf as their big man. Danny Wolf, he's kind of like a. Dollar General, Aperin, Shangoon, that type of guy. Center that can do a lot of different things. Can dribble, can pass, can score, can do all this type of stuff. He has a smart team. They're a very interesting team when it comes in. Looking at some of their Kempom. Yeah, they're a very balanced team as well. They have a really de deep team. So it's going to be tough, but I got to go Auburn here. I think they're just a really, they're a tough team. I mean, they're a top five team in the nation. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think I got to go Auburn here in the first round. Next got the 6-11 matchup, BYU and Duquesne. Finally, I don't know how to say that school name, Duquesne. It's Duquesne. This S is silent. BYU, they're a team that relies on the three ball a whole lot. I think looking at some of their stats, they're, I think, the number two team in all of college basketball in three points made and three-point attempts. So they they get their threes up. You know what I mean? Uh, looking at Ken Palm, they have almost a top ten offense. They have a really good all-around team, but they rely on the three ball a lot. And they got Duquesne making their first tournament appearance since the 70s. Um, they won the Atlantic 10 Conference, which was a crazy conference tournament, by the way, where all the top seeds lost in like the second round. It was crazy. But Duquesne makes it. Duquesne is more of a defensive-oriented team. Yeah, their offense is not good, but they're a top 30 defense. Uh, they have Day-Day Grant, Jimmy Clark the III. Uh, they're a very rugged team. This is an interesting one because Duquesne has the defense, BYU has the offense. BYU is a three-point shooting heavy team, which personally for me, I'm not a huge fan of teams that rely on the three because I feel like if you rely on the three you die on the three but Duquesne is a tough gritty defense so I can see a world where Duquesne can come out and win this one over BYU but also looking at Duquesne watching their games and stuff they're very a gritty team like BYU gets hot hits like two or three threes in a row I don't feel like Duquesne can come back from it you know what I mean BYU has the just the chance of just exploding and hitting some shots so I'm going to go BYU. I'll go BYU over Duquesne. And a close one, I'll go BYU. Next we have the 314, Illinois and Moorhead State. Illinois, they won the Big Ten Championship. Terrence Shannon, Jr., Terrence Shannon Jr., potential draft prospect. He's a dog. He averages 22 points per game. I think he had he had 40 in their conference final game and then 30 in the championship game. He's a bucket getter. You know, uh, Illinois has got one of the best. Off their number three offense team in the nation. They also have Coleman Hawkins, who's another draft prospect. They're a really, really good team. And then we have Morehead State at 14. Shout out to Ken Faree. Uh They won the Ohio Valley Conference. They were the best team in the Ohio Valley Conference. Um, Riley Minx is their guy, averaging 20 and 10 with two assists, a steal block. He's really, really good. Had a really good year. Morehead State's a tough team, but Illinois offense. Illinois is just a really powerful offense. You know, if Terrence Shannon Jr. gets going. Um, it's going to be really, really hard to stop them. So I'm going to go... I'm going Illinois. I'm not, I haven't picked any upsets yet, but I think that's going to change. I'm going to go Illinois. I'm going to go Illinois over Moorhead State, even though Moorhead State might battle. 7-10. Now this, I feel like, is probably the most interesting first-round game of this, this region. Washington State and Drake, the 7-10 matchup. This is going to be a very interesting one. Washington State has been a team. Washington T State, shout out to Clay Thompson. Washington State has been a team that has been really good all year. They kind of surprisingly ran up the ranks. They were a ranked team. Uh, they lost early in their Pac-12 championship or the tournament, but they're a really good team. They got Isaac Jones, Miles Rice, Jalen Wells. Uh, they're a really good all-around, just solid all-around basketball team. 64th offense, the top 30 defense. And then you have Drake at number 10. They won the Missouri Valley championship. They have Tucker DeVries, who's the coach's son. Tucker DeVries is their star player. He averages almost 22-7-3 with his one and a half steals. He's a really, really good as well. This is going to be a team. Both teams are very kind of similar. They play a good style of basketball, very smart, intelligent, you know, move the ball around type type of basketball. 
I think it's going to be a very interesting game. It's going to be a very tight game. But I'm going with Drake. I think Drake, even last year, the year before, they've been a team that has kind of been, you know, really good. But, of course, in a small conference, no one really looks at them. But Drake is a really good team, man. Tucker DeVries is really good. Um, and I don't know. I just think this is going to be a really good game. And at the end, it's like, give it to your star. And I think Tucker DeVries and Drake, I think they're going to do it. I think they can beat Washington State, you know. And then we have the 215, Iowa State, South Dakota State. Iowa State won the Big 12 tournament, dominated Houston in the championship game, which is insane. They won by like 30 dang year. Uh, they have the number one defense in the nation. I would say they're the number one defense in the nation. Um, they have like four, five guys that average over a steal and a half per game. It's crazy what they do on the defensive end. They've been dominant. They could have maybe even been a one seat potentially. You know, and then you have South Dakota State at 15. South Dakota State, I think the last two years, the last couple years was a team that, you know, they had Baylor Shireman and it was like they could make an upset. This was probably one of their worst South Dakota State teams at 15, you know. Um, yeah, they won the Summit League. They have Zeke Mayo, who averages almost 19-6, three and a half assists per game. Um, so they have a solid team, but I don't, I don't love the South Dakota. I think I picked South Dakota State to upset a team a couple years ago, and they didn't do it. But I'm going with Iowa State. I think their defense is just, they're just too elite. All right, next game, we got the West Region. The 116 North Carolina and then whoever wins out of Howard and Wagner. Um, shout out to Howard and Wagner. Howard won the MEAC championship um, two years in a row. They made the tournament. And then Wagner somehow as a, as a sixth seed won the NEC tournament, you know, for their first championship, their first tournament appearance. It's like the early 2000s. But I gotta, I'm, going North Car- I mean, I'm going North Carolina. I think these two are like two of the worst teams in terms of ranking and stuff in the tournament. 8-9 matchup, Mississippi State, Michigan State. Mississippi State um, finished 21-13. They lost in the conference semifinals. Then you have Michigan State, Tom Izzo. I think this is, what, the 26th straight year or something like that that they made the tournament because Tom Izzo is a basketball legend. Um, they're a very interesting team as well. They're a top-10 defense. They have Tyson Walker, Malik Hall, a team that was very experienced in the last couple years. This is a really tough game, man, because... I don't I don't go I don't like I don't like going against Tom Izzo. <laughs> I don't like going against the legends and Tom Izzo is one of them. I'm gonna go Michigan State. I mean I like the top ten defense. I like that they're a more experienced veteran group with Tyson Walker, Malik Hill, Malik Hall, AJ Hogger. Like I like that. Five twelve matchup, St. Mary's and Grand Canyon. St. Mary, they won the West Coast Conference. Uh they were number one seed and they won their championship. They have a really, really solid team. They're a top twenty team in the nation. The number two off, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Number 45 offense, number six, top 20 defense. And they have a really, like, all-around team. It's not just, they have one star. You know, that Aiden Mahaney, Augustus Marshallunas, which is Sarunas Marshallunas, I think is, is his son. Mitchell Saxon, Joshua Jefferson, Alex Dukas. Um, they have a really good all-around team, and I like that. And St. Mary's is a really good program. And then you have Grand Canyon at number 12. Grand Canyon, they won the WAC. Was it the WAC? I think they're in the... The WAC, they won the tournament. I think that's like the third time in four years they made the NCAA tournament since coming to Division One. So out to Grand Canyon. They have Ty and Grant Foster, who is really good. He averaged, yeah, 26, an assist, a steal, one and a half blocks on 44% shooting. He's really good. You know, I think this is an interesting one. This is an interesting game. Both these teams are kind of similar. They both play kind of more. Well, St. Mary's kind of has a team. Grand Canyon, you have Ty and Grant Foster, who's kind of the star player in that. Um... Grand Canyon is not a team to take lightly. I watched their tournament. I watched their championship games. They're not a team to take lightly at all. They have a lot of length. You know, um, their defense, I think, is really good. They got their numbers. Yeah, they have a t- almost a top 50 defense. You know, St. Mary's is more is also a, almost a top 20 defense. So it's probably going to be more of a defensive style matchup, and whoever's offense can really get it going. Uh, I said this is a tough one because five, five twelves are tough. Five twelves are tough, to be honest. Five twelves are tough. I'm going St. Mary's. I'm gonna go St. Mary's, even though I really want to go with Grand Canyon. I'm gonna go with St. Mary's though on this one. Four thirteen. You have Alabama, Charleston. Alabama just extended Nate O. Shot to him. They have the number two offense in the nation. They get up threes. They are a very fast paced offense led by Mark Sears, um, Aaron Estrada. They have Grant Nelson, the transfer from North Dakota State. You know their their offense is amazing. You know, defensively, they're not in the top 100. But 
their team that just is gonna I'll score you. They're kind of like maybe the Indiana Pacers, if you will. They're just gonna put in buckets on you. And then you have the College of Charleston, a 13 seed. They won the CAA tournament. Um, they're a top 60 offense. They're more of a kind of do it by committee type of team. Uh, they're a very interesting team in the like in this. Alabama's offense is really really good, and I really believe in Nate Oates in them. So I'm going to Alabama on this one. Dang, I feel like I'm not picking as many upsets. I feel, honestly, I feel like when we get later into the bracket, we're gonna get to see a lot more upsets. I feel like this side is not as upset heavy as upset heavy as the other side. But speaking of upsets, we might have one right here. Six eleven spot, Clemson and New Mexico. Clemson finished as the sixth spot. Um, they finish. They had a kind of disappointing ACC t- championship. PJ Hall is their guy. You have just nineteen six over one and a half blocks per game. They have Joe Girard the third as well. Uh, they're a top 35 team in terms of Kempom. But New Mexico. New Mexico um, has some good, some up and down. Really good Mountain West tournament. They won the Mountain West tournament. Uh, they have a backcourt of NBA player sons, if you don't know. Their backcourt is Jalen House and Jamal Mashburn Jr., the sons of Eddie House and Jamal Mashburn. Very explosive backcourt. House averages 16. Mashburn averages 14. They also have JT Toppin, Donovan Dent. They are really, I really like New Mexico, and I'm picking them over Clemson. I think it's a might be a popular one, but it's one that I feel like is just, it's true. 314, Baylor and Colgate is our next matchup. Uh, Baylor and Colgate. Baylor are really good, you know. Um, they finish early in the Big 12. They're a top 10 offense. The number 14 team in terms of Kempom. They have Jacoby Walker, Jacoby Walter who might be a lottery pick this year. Freshman averaging 14 points a game on good shooting. They have Ray J. Dennis. They have six players that average over double figures. Vest Messi also is another draft prospect. They have an amazing team led by their coach, who I'm forgetting his name right now. It's not my head, but he's a really, really good coach. And they have Colgate. Another year, another Colgate appearance. Won the Patriot League. I think it was, what, four in the past five years or whatever they won the Patriot League. Um... They're a team that I think I, I've picked in the past couple years maybe to be an upset. You know, uh, they're Braden Smith. Keegan Records has been there for a while. Uh, I don't love this Colgate team, though, as much as I have other years, so I'm going to go with Baylor. Last couple matches, 7-10, we have Dayton and Nevada. This could be a very interesting one. Dayton has a number 7 seed in there. Uh, had an early exit in the American in the Atlantic 10, which, again, Atlantic 10 was an insane tournament. Uh, they're a top 20 offense. We have Deron Holmes. Really good, averaging 28, two assists, two blocks, 54% shooting. Um, I like Deron Holmes. Dayton is a very tough team. And then you have Nevada at number 10. Nevada uh, lost them. They finished second in the Mountain West. They lost in the quarterfinals. Um, they are a top. They're a very balanced team. Number 40 offense, number 36 defense. Gerard, Gerard Lucas is their leading guy, averaging 18 points per game. They have Keenan Blackshear, averages 15, 5, and 5 with a steal. Nick Davidson averages 12 and 7. Um, they're both kind of balanced. Well, Dane's more of an offensive five house. Nevada is more of a very balanced team, which I like. I like the balanced teams. I'm going with Nevada. I'm going with Nevada with the upset on Dayton. I, I like that. I like balanced teams. I like teams that can do it on both ends. You know, they're about average in both spots. They have a couple of different guys that can go off and get it. And I like that, so I'm going with Nevada. The final matchup, 215, Arizona, Long Beach State. Um, the interesting thing about the 215s is that I feel like the last couple of years has always been a 2 15 upset. Last year we had Princeton beat Arizona. The year before that we had the St. Peter's Magic or Roberts. I feel like there's always a 15 seed that's sneaky. Now, am I saying Long Beach State is the one? No. And it's a funny thing about Long Beach State is that right before their conference tournament, the Big West Conference Tournament, they were saying they were going to fire their coach. And then they won the, the tournament. So now a coach that is going to be fired is going to be has led the team to the tournament, which is kind of crazy to think about. This guy's literally coaching for his job. But Arizona is the number two spot. Um, They finished first in the Pac-12. They lost early in the championship, I mean, in the conference tournament. They're the sixth best team in the nation, according to Ken Palm. A top 10 offense, just outside the top 10 defense. Caleb Love, the transfer from North Carolina, had an amazing year, 18-4-3. They have Omar Balo, who's really good, down low in the paint. They have Pell, uh, Pelle Larson, Kashad Johnson. Um... Arizona is a really good team, man. After the upset that happened last year when they lost to Princeton, I think they're coming for revenge over Long Beach State. Um, 
Long Beach State, um, one of the worst teams in the tournament, but they did win their, you know, conference. So respect to them. Bad guy to Arizona. But 15 seeds are very dangerous is what I'm saying for maybe the future. 15 seeds are dangerous. Going to the south, we have Houston and Longwood. Houston, one of the best teams in the nation all year. Kelvin Sampson has an incredible program over there. Houston, they won the Big 12 uh, regular season. They were in the top three and top five in rankings, empowering the entirety of the year. They had a, an unfortunate end. They got blown out in the Big 12 championship game. They also didn't have Jerron Roberts, one of their important players. But Houston is an amazing team. Uh, yeah, they won 30 games. They're the, the number two team in the nation, according to Ken Palm. They have the 17th office. They have the second best defense. Uh, they have LJ Cryer. Jamal Shedd is incredible as well. Emmanuel Sharp, of course, Jerron Roberts. Um, and they have experience. I love this Houston team. And then Longwood, we have them as the number 16 spot. Um, they won the Big South Championship. 21-13 um, shots at Longwood. But i got to go Houston here. I don't know if we're seeing a 16-1 upset this season. But then again, you know, we saw it last year, so who knows. 8-9, Nebraska and Texas A&M. This one I feel like is going to be a very fun game. Nebraska at number 8. Um, they lost in the Big, Tw Big Ten semifinals. Kempom, their top 30 offense and a top 40 defense kind of bounce there. Their main guy is Keisei Tominaga, which he could be a star in this tournament. He could be, he's going to be one of the fan favorites of the tournament, especially if they make a run. If Nebraska breaks a run, Keisei Tominaga is going to be one of the darlings of America. He's a very fun player, point guard, makes a lot of, makes a lot of shots that you're just like, really? He made that shot? Makes a lot of game-breaking shots. Really good player. But they have a great team as well. Bryce Williams, they have Mike Mass, Juwan Gary. Very balanced team as well. So Nebraska is an interesting team. And then you have Texas A&M as a number nine spot. Uh, they have Wade Taylor the fourth, who could be another guy that could be a fan favorite because he's a bucket getter. Wade Taylor the fourth is a bucket getter. Uh, he can gill get you 30 if you need him to, which is something that's very interesting in this tournament. So it's kind of going to be the, pa the battle of kind of like Whose name will be better, Wade Taylor or Casey Tominaga? You know, uh, it's an interesting game. Looking at some of the rankings here, Texas A&M is definitely more of an offensive team, while Nebraska is more of a defensive team and more of a, you know, kind of collective, which I like a lot more. I'm going to go with Texas A&M. I like, I like the, having the fact that you have a guy like Wade Taylor who can go, who again can go up and drop 30 if you really need him to. I really, really like that. So I'm going Texas A&M on that one. Now this one, five twelve. This is this is one. Wisconsin and James Madison. Wisconsin at number five. They lost in the Big Ten championship game, but they beat Purdue. Um, their team at um, number seventeen team. They have a th the thirteenth best offense, forty seven defense. AJ Store is another bucket getter. Went off in the Big Ten tournament. He averages seventeen a game. They also have Stephen Crowell, Tyler Wall. Their point guard, Chucky Net Hepburn, is really solid. I like him a lot. So Wisconsin's a good team. But you have James Madison at number 12. If you don't know, if you haven't followed, James Madison has is 31-3. and three. They won 31 games. They won the Sun Belt. Um, Kempom, their top 60 team, 56 offense, 79 defense. They had led by TJ Biggerstaff and Noah Friedel. But this is an actual team. You might not know about James Madison or whatever, but this is an actual team. And this is one of the teams that could go on the Cinderella run. I will put my money on them probably out of every double-digit seed. I think it was New Mexico a double-digit seed. I think maybe besides after New Mexico, I think James Madison is my number two in terms of double-digit seeds that can make a run. James Madison. Watch out, watch out for James Madison University. They're an actual really good team. And I'm picking them over Wisconsin. I'm picking James Madison to be that team. Next, we have the 4-13 matchup, Duke and Vermont. Duke at the number four spot in this region. Uh, they're Duke. They lost early in the ACC tournament. Kempom, they're a top 10 team. They're a top 10 offense, 26 defense. They have a lot of draft prospects. Kyle Filipowski is their main guy, averaging 17-8, two assists, a steal and a block, potential lottery pick. Jeremy McCain, as well as another first-round pick potential. He's a shooter up there. They also have a really good lineup. They have Jeremy Rogers, their veteran point guard, Mark Mitchell, Tyrese Proctor. They have a really, really good team. 
And with their shots to John Shire, he's doing his thing. They have Vermont as a 13 seed. They won the American East tournament. Um, again, Vermont has just been like that over in the American East. Uh, Shamir Bogues is really good. Uh, that's a transfer. They have TJ Long, Aaron Deloney. They're a really good defensive team. Definitely more of a grinded out type of team uh, with a lot of length and versatility on the defensive end. Um, I'm going to go with Duke, though. I really like Duke's team. I like their depth that they have. Uh, I think they're a lot more of a veteran type of team than expected. 6-11. I think this is a very interesting game as well. Texas Tech and NC State. Texas Tech is the number six seed. Um, according to Kenpon, they're a top 25 team, top 25 offense, top 50 defense. Pop Isaacs, their main guy, you have just 16, three assists per game. Uh, they have a really good all-around team. Definitely more of an offensive power powerhouse. They have NC State, who somehow is here. They were the number 10 seed in the ACC tournament and won the ACC tournament. They took out everybody. They won five games in five days and won the ACC tournament and got an automatic bid. Um, they are very. They have a lot of heart. You have DJ Horn as their leading guy. He comes off the bench. He averages 17. DJ Burns, their, their big, big, big man, <laughs> averages 12.5 points per game. Um, according to Kempom, they're a top 50 offense, top 100 defense. Uh, this is an interesting one because now NC State, they had to win five games in five days, and a lot of people have been talking about Maybe can can they keep that same energy and morale up, especially now with a couple of days off? You know, can they really keep that momentum going for the rest of the year over a really good Texas Tech team? And I've been trying to think of that as well because I want to believe, but also I, I, I understand like it's really tough to keep that up. And Texas Tech is a really good team. I mean, they're a team that, uh, yeah, really good, balanced, top 50 offense and defense, a top 25 team in the nation. They have a star, star and Pop Isaacs. I'm going with NC State, though. I'm riding with the Wolfpack. I'm riding with NC State. I believe in the Wolfpack, and I believe in their heart, and I think they could keep it going. Now we have a 314, Kentucky and Oakland. Kentucky is Kentucky. 23-9, uh, they finished second in the NCC regular season, lost early in the quarterfinals. Uh, according to Kempon, they're a top-20 team. They're a top-five offense, but outside of the top-100 in defense. But offense buckets... They can get, they can give it to you from anywhere. You want Antonio Reeves, a twenty point score. You want Rob Dillingham, who's a potential top ten pick. Reed Shepard is a potential top five pick. You want, you want them. You want DJ Wagner as their starting point guard, the number one high school player in the nation coming in. You want Trey Mitchell. Like if you want buckets, they get, they can give, we can give it to you. You want buckets, we got buckets over here. All right. Now the real question on. Not only for this game, but for the entire tournament for them is, can they lock in defensively? Because they've had shown some moments where they can lock in defensively and they look like one of the best teams in the country. But it's not there all the time because they have a young team. But I think their offense should be able to get them by for at least maybe two or three games. But once we get to maybe if they get to the Sweet 16 or whatever, that's when they're really going to have to start locking in. But a first round matchup against Oakland. Uh, they won the Horizon League. Uh, according to Kempom, not a very great team. Trey Townsend is their leading guy, though. He has just 17, 7, 3 assists, a steal. He does everything for them. They have Plank Lampman or Lampman as well. Shout out to Oakland, but Kentucky, I think their offense is just going to be too powerful to stop for the first couple rounds. 7 10. Now, this is an interesting one because this is the first four game. You have Boise State and Colorado. And I feel like one of these two teams, I feel like every year, for the last couple years, there has been a force, a force four team that wins a game. And I feel like this is going to be the team to do it. Either Boise State or Colorado. Boise State were really good in the regular season of Mountain West. Lost early in the Mountain West tournament for Boise State. Um, yeah, according to Kempom, they're a top 30 defense. Um, they have a really good all-around game. Tyson Dejenhart, Chibuzo Agbo, Omar Stanley, Max Rice. And Colorado, they lost in the Pac-12 championship game. I love Pac Colorado. They have a couple NBA prospects. Tristan De Silva. A potential first round pick. Cody Williams is a potential top five pick, brother of Jalen Williams. KJ Simpson is amazing as well. Colorado is really good. Florida, they're in seven spot. Uh, a top 15 offense. They have Walter Clean Jr., who I really love Walter Clean Jr. But a big thing also is that in the Florida lost in the SEC championship game, and in that game, they lost their starting center. So they're not going to have their starting center for the season, which could play a big factor in things. I think Colorado. 
I think Colorado beats Boise State, and I think they beat Florida. I think I'm I'm picking Colorado to beat Boise State in the first four, and then beat Florida. I like Colorado's all around team. I love the players they have. They have KJ Simpson, Tristan De Silva, Cody Williams, Eddie Lampkin Jr. They have a really good all around team. Good starting five, you know, um, top twenty, almost a top twenty five team in the nation. I, I'm going I'm going with Colorado to be my first four team to go. And the final matchup in this region, Marquette, Western Kentucky. Marquette is dealing with injury. Their star player, Tyler Kolick, did not play in the Big East tournament game. Tournament champ, tournament. Did not play in the Big East tournament, but they made it all the way to the championship game. They lost to UConn, but they still have a really good team all around. They have Cam Jones, also Godaro, David Joplin. You know, so they still have a really good team. It's just they do not have their star player. And I think it, they could survive for one round. They play against the fifth seed, Western Kentucky. Cause this, could this be the 15 team? Could this be the number 15 team that takes it? Western Kentucky, they won the Conference USA Tournament. They're led by Don McHenry. Your star player have just 15 points per game. Uh, they're almost a top 100 defense. Um, so maybe this could be the top 15, the, the 15 seed to do it and take out a two seed. I'm not going to be picking them, though. I'm going to go Marquette. Even if Tyler Kolick doesn't play, I love their team all around. But once we get past this, then Tyler Kolick's going to need to come around. But Marquette, I think they could survive one game. The final region, the Midwest region, we're going there. We got the number one seed, Purdue, taking on the winner of the first four games between Montana State and Grambling. Um, Montana State, Grambling, shout out to both of them. Montana State, they somehow won their tournament uh, there. They went finished as a 500 team and won the Big Sky. And then Grambling, shout out to Grambling, making their first ever tournament appearance. You know, shout out to them. They won the SWAC. Um, but Purdue is going to win that game. Maybe. Maybe, because there's a thing about Purdue that I'm not going to say for this game, for the rest of the bracket. How much can we trust Purdue? The last couple, I mean, they lost to it. They were one seed last year, and they lost to a 16 seed. So I'm going to pick them to win this game. But Purdue, I think this, the I think the, I personally think the Midwest region is the, it could, that could be the chaos region. Because honestly, looking at the Midwest region, Stuff could get crazy in the Midwest region. I think that's the must-watch region in terms of if we're looking at all the regions and what games and what stuff. The Midwest region could get could get wild, I think. But I'm going to go with Purdue in the first round. I'm going to go with them. 8-9 matchup, you have Utah State and TCU. Utah State, uh, they were finished number one in the Mountain West. They lost the, um, in the tournament. They have Gray Osabor, their star player. Chef, great name, by the way, as well. Great name. You have just 18, 9, 3 assists, a steal, 1 and a half blocks. They have Ian Martinez, Darius Brown. Uh, they're a top 50 team according to Ken Palm. Top 40 offense, top 70 defense. Uh, they're a really good regular season team. And then you have TCU down there, number 9. TCU, um, they're not great in the regular season. Went to the conference, to quarterfinals, and the Big 12 lost. They have Emmanuel Miller as their star player. You have just 16, 6, 2 assists, and a steal. They also have Jameer Nelson Jr., as their starting point guard, who's been very solid as well. I think this is a very interesting game. Um, TCU has, I think, the explosiveness maybe to go on a run. Uh, but Utah State, I feel like, has a better team all around. So I'm going to go with Utah State in this game. 5-12. Now, here's where we start getting kind of wild. Gonzaga and McNeese. Gonzaga, you probably don't know the Gonzaga that we were used to seeing. Drew Timmy is no longer there. Julian Strother is no longer there. A lot of their players in the past couple years aren't there anymore, but they still have a good team. They did lose in the West Coast Conference um, Championship because St. Mary's is really good. Kempom, they're still a top 15 team, a top 10 offense, top 50 defense. Graham Ike is their leading guy. They have Anton Watson, Nolan Hickman, Ryan Nemhard, who's the brother of Andrew Nemhard. Um, so Gonzaga, even though they're not the same anymore, don't sleep on them. Still a very solid team, but you have McNeese at number 12. McNeese, you probably don't know who McNeese is or never heard of McNeese, but don't let them fool you. They won 30 games. They won the Southland, ran through the Southland Conference. Kempom, they're a top 60 team, almost a top 50 offense, top 100 defense, led by Shahada Wells. They're just 17, 4, and 5 with three steals per game. They, they have run a really good program over there. 
And I'm going to combine both of these because you have the 512 and the 413. McNeese and Sanford, I've seen, have been very popular upset picks. Both of them. Which means one of them is not going to do it. I feel like when you have two upset picks, especially close to each other, one of them isn't going to hit. One of them is not going to hit. Either McNeese or Sanford, one of those teams are not going to, both of those teams are not going to make it, personally, for me. But I'm going to pick Gonzaga over McNeese. I'm going to pick Gonzaga over McNeese. I think it's going to be a very interesting game. I think one of McNeese and Sanford, one of them is going to win. Not both of them. And if both of them win, then wow. A 12-13 second round is crazy. But I feel like one of them is not going to win. I feel like Gonzaga is going to be the team to beat, to not lose for that one. You know, even though they're also a team that you can't really fully trust in the in the past couple tournaments, but um, I'm going to trust them in this game. And then we have the 413, Kansas and Sanford. This is another very popular upset pick. Kansas is very injured. Their star player, Hunter Dickinson, their big man, um, is might not play in this game. Kevin McCuller, their other best player, who's a potential draft prospect, might not play. He's been in and out of the lineup. And Sanford is a really good team. Um, they finished 29-5. They won the Southern Conference. According to Kempon, they're a top 70 offense. A chore, a chore is really good. He averages 16-6, almost two boxer games, shoots 60% from the field. I like Sanford's team and Kansas. They had a really early exit in the Big 12 because of the injuries. I just don't know how much they can overcome the injury, especially against a tough Sanford team. So I'm going with Sanford. I think Stanford's going to be the, th- the the one to do it out of McNeese and Stanford. Obviously, if these two are flipped, if McNeese was playing against Stanford and or McNeese was playing against Kansas, Stanford was against Gonzaga, I probably would have picked McNeese over Kansas. But I'm picking Stanford over Kansas. Final few matchups of the first round of 6-11. We have South Carolina and Oregon. This is a very interesting game as well. I've also seen Oregon as a big a popular upset pick over this one as well. South Carolina, they're a team that were picked last to finish in the SEC, and they finished as one of the best teams in the SEC. According to Kempon, they're a top 50 team. Very balanced, 46 offense, 54 defense. Uh, Michi Johnson is really good. Colin Murray Boyles is a potential draft prospect that I really like a whole lot. And yeah, I like this tough South Carolina team. And then you have Oregon. They won the Pac-12 championship. According to Kempon, they're a top 50 offense, number 70 defense. Nefali Dante is really good. He averages 16-9. Almost two steals and two blocks, shooting 70% for the field. In the Pac-12 championship game, he went like 11 for 11. He's amazing. You also have Jermaine Cousinard, Jackson Shellstad. This is a very popular... I see why this is a very popular pick because they have... Oregon has some really good players. Oregon has some really good players down there. You know? Uh, South Carolina, I like the toughness. South Carolina is a very tough team. Very gritty type of team. But Oregon has a lot of their really good players as well. A lot of stars. So I'm going with Oregon. I'm going to go Oregon with the upset over South Carolina. 314, you have Crane and Akron. Crane, they've been a really good team, one of the best teams in the league. Um, they finish. They were really good in the Big East. According to Kempom, they're almost a top 10 team. They're a number 11 team in the nation. Number 12 offense, 24 defense. You know, uh, I like Baylor Shireman as their star player. They have Trey Alexander, Ryan Cogburner. This is a really good team, Crane is. And Akron, Akron, shout to LeBron. <laughs> Uh, they won the MAC. Enrique Freeman. That Enrique Freeman is nice. Averages 18, 13, two blocks per game. Enrique Freeman is a dog. He's gonna have to go into his bag in order for them to win this game because Crane is really tough. I gotta go Crane over Akron. Next we have seven Texas facing off against one of the first four teams, either Virginia or Colorado State. Um, I think Colorado State beats Virginia in the first four game because I like Colorado State. They have a guy named Isaiah Evans who I think he could be a star. And they have a chance. If Colorado State wins, they have a really good chance to beat Texas because Isaiah Evans is a star. Texas, they're really tough, though. They have Max Aismas, Max Aismas, who if you don't remember who Max Aismas is, um, he led Oral Roberts to that, that Cinderella run a couple years ago. Now he's in Texas, one of a college basketball legend, Max Aismas is. Uh, they also have Dylan DeSue, Tyrese Harner, Dylan Mitchell. I really like this Texas team, so I'm going to pick them over Colorado State. And then the final one, Tennessee and St. Peter's. Could St. Peter's do it again? Two years ago, they were 15 seed in the middle all the way to the lead eight. Can they do it again? You're facing off against Tennessee, who was the best team in the regular season in the SEC. They lost out early in the tournament game. 
according to Ken Palm, they're a top 10 team. They're number 17. They have a top five defense, the third best defense in the nation. Don't connect is a buck, is a is a star. He could raise his his draft value up, 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 up in this tournament if he has a good one. He has just 21 points per game. They also have Sakai Ziegler. I like this Tennessee team a lot. And you have St. Peter's. They somehow won the MAAC tournament. Um, they have the uh, below three. They have a really bad offense in terms of Ken Palm, 305, but their defense is a top 80. Uh, I don't think they have anybody from that St. Peter's team that was Cinderella. Even their coach is gone. No one from that St. Peter's team. So could St. Peter's do it again? I'm sorry, but I, I can't do it. I can't pick. I can't pick St. Peter's again. Even though that would be insane if they do it again. I just don't think they can do it. I got Tennessee. All right. Let's speed this up a little bit more. Round of 32. Going back to the East region. UConn and FAU in the second round. Um, FAU, of course, they made the Final Four last year. They have a veteran type of team. And UConn is really... I just can't I just can't go against UConn in that one. San Diego State and Auburn. This is a really interesting game as well. We could get a rematch of the, of the finals last year. Um... Auburn, I love the Auburn's defense. They're a tough team. San Diego State's also, these are two of the best defenses in the, in the nation. Going up against each other, it's really going to be about whose offense can carry them more. And I trust Auburn's offense a little bit more than San Diego State's. So I'm going to go with Auburn. Uh, BYU and Illinois. BYU, again, BYU has a chance just because BYU has the three ball. And if their three ball is hidden, they're a tough team to stop. But... The thing about Illinois also is that they have Terrence Shannon Jr. who can go get 30 and 40 if he really needs to. So that's why this is a very polarizing polarizing game, I feel like, for me. You know? Um, the thing is, I say I don't trust teams that shoot a lot of threes. But I'm going to go with... I'm going BYU. I'm going BYU. I feel like we have to have one upset in this side of the bracket. I'm going BYU over Illinois. I think they get hot. I think they do it. And then Drake, Drake and Iowa State. I would love to go Drake, but Iowa State's defense is just too too insane. If Tucker DeVries can have another big game, then maybe. But Ohio State, I mean Iowa State, their defense is just too too wild. Too really too good. I gotta go. Next, North Carolina, Michigan State. This could get interesting. Again, Tom Izzo's not a coach that you want to go up against a whole lot. Not, not a coach you wanna, not a coach you wanna face, you wanna pick against. Kind of like if like Eric Spolstra or Greg Popovich in a series, you don't wanna pick against Tom Izzo. I really like North Carolina's team though. R.J. Davis is a baller. Armando Baycott, Cormac Ryan, like they they they're a really good team. North Carolina is a really really good team. They're number one seed for a reason. <sighs> one number one seed has to go out early. It's just it just is what it is. It has to happen. I'm going Michigan State. I'm going Michigan State. Tom, I I trust. I believe in Tom Izzo. I'm going Michigan State to be the first team to take out a number one. North Carolina doesn't make it to the Sweet 16, which would be tough. But I don't know. It's March Madness, man. St. Mary's in Alabama. Interesting game. Four or five matchup. Um, go back to the stats real quick just to get myself a refresher. Alabama, amazing offense. St. Mary's a really good team. Both teams are kind of more all-around game type style. Alabama's defense is going to be in for it, though. St. Mary's can do his their thing. Even though Alabama, low does, again, Alabama, you have the number two offense. Alabama could go off and just score 90, 95 points. <laughs> and then St. Mary's doesn't have anything, you know, to come back with. So that's just, it's really, really tough. I'm going to go with, ah. Uh, I'm going with St. Mary's. I'm going with St. Mary's. I like that they have a more of an all-around team. They have a more depth line. But Alabama's offense, if Alabama can't stop anybody, then, you know, it's tough. St. Mary's is a really tough team to stop. So I'm going with St. Mary's. New Mexico and Baylor. New Mexico and Baylor. Again, I think New Mexico has a, has a chance. New Mexico has a really good chance to go on a big run. You know, but Baylor is a really good, good team, you know. New Mexico could. New Mexico could be the team, though. New Mexico could be the, the double digit seed to go on the run. You know. New Mexico. I'm going New Mexico. I'm going New Mexico. I'm going New Mexico. I'm going New Mexico. I like the house, the house and Mashburn backcourt. JT Toppin. They're a really, really good team. They have explosiveness. I'm going New Mexico. 
And then Nevada, Arizona. I'm going to go Arizona here. Uh, I think they have a, just a better team than Nevada. Caleb Love, Omar Balo. I, I think they, they get to they go they beat Nevada. They go to the Sweet 16. Next region, down the south, Houston and Texas A&M. This is an interesting matchup. Again, you have Wade Taylor going to get against one of the best defenses in the nation, though. I'm going with Houston in this game. Not very comfortably. Because, again, Wade Taylor has the, exp- the ability. And Houston's also, has, their offense has kind of been a little bit a little bit not great in the last couple games. So if they get into a scoring battle, Wade Taylor maybe could go off and pop off. But I'm going to go with Houston, though. James Madison and Duke. Remember what I said about James Madison? James Madison is the team that potentially could go on the big run. Do I pick them over Duke, though? Let the madness begin. James Madison, the 12 seed, makes it to the Sweet 16. James Madison is going to be the one. NC State in Kentucky. This is a very tough, interesting game. It's probably going to be who can get a stop first. I'm going with Kentucky. Again, I feel like their offense is just going to, it's just, you know, their offense can hold them off for a game or two, especially at this point, NC State probably be so exhausted. I don't know. So I'm going to go Kentucky. And I'm going Marquette over. Well, it's also interesting because we don't know Tyler Kolick's up. If Tyler Kolick is back and healthy, I'm going with Marquette. But if Tyler Kolick is still not playing, Colorado has a chance. Colorado has a chance. I'm going with Marquette. Consider if Tyler Kolick is healthy and the team is healthy, I'm going with Marquette. And this one, though. No. Final Midwest. This is where... Can I really trust Purdue in this situation? Purdue and Utah State. Can I trust Purdue? Utah State, again, they have a great Osabor, really good all around team. Going back to some of their notes that I had on them. Great Osabor, top 40 offense. Purdue is really good, but again, I don't know how much can I really trust Purdue. Something in my heart wants to go Utah State. Even though Purdue should win this game, they're the better team. Something in my heart wants to go with Utah State. I'm going. <clears throat> I'm going Utah State. I'm going Utah State. I don't know why. Purdue is amazing. Zach Eady, best player in the nation. Fletcher Lawyer. You know they have a good team. But I don't. It's it's like when you see like the Clippers or something in the playoffs. It's like they're good, but can I really trust? Like some somehow they always find a way to blow it. I can't put my full trust in Purdue, especially they lost to a 16 seed last year. They lost to Fairly Dickinson last year. I can't, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't over. I can't. I'm sorry, Purdue. I'm sorry. I, I just can't. I can't. I can't put my trust in them. I got them losing to Utah State. Gonzaga and Sanford is an interesting game. Gonzaga and Sanford is interesting. Again, Gonzaga might not be the same, but they're still good. Sanford coming off a of Kansas upset. Can they do it again? Can a 13 seed make it to the Sweet 16? They already have a 12 and 11. Can we add in a 13? <laughs> you know, in Sanford. A chore, a chore. A.G. State and McCray. Jaden Campbell. You know, Jermaine Marshall. Top 70 offense. Going up against Gonzaga. With Graham Ike and Anton Watson and Ryan Nemhard and Mark Few. Top 10 offense. I'm going Gonzaga. I'm going Gonzaga. I, I can't pit Sanford all the way. Because Gonzaga, I feel like, is becoming an underrated team at this point. I'm going to go Gonzaga. Final couple matchups of the Swiss round of 32. Oregon and Creighton. Oregon and Creighton. I'm going back and forth. Because, again, Oregon, they have the star power to do it. Oregon, they have Fali Dante, um, Cozenard, Shellstad. They have the star power and the firepower to do it. But, again, Crane's t- I love Crane. Crane's team all around. I mean, Baylor Shireman, you know, Ryan Cogburner, Trey Alexander. They they blew out UConn early in the year. I want to go Oregon, but I, I'm going Creighton. And then Texas and Tennessee, that's going to be a very interesting game. I'm going with, hmm, I'm going with Tennessee. I'm going with Tennessee. I think Don Connect. I like Zakai like Ziegler. I like the old line team they build over there. I'm going with Tennessee over Texas. Sweet 16. Back up in the East, UConn and Auburn. Very interesting game. Very, very interesting game right there. UConn and Auburn. Defense, one of the best offenses versus one of the best defenses. 
Auburn's a very gritty team. UConn is just, UConn is so good, man. That's the thing. UConn is just a really, really freaking good team, man. They have it all. It's gonna. It's hard to pick against UConn. But I honestly do feel like if any team could do it, could take UConn out, I would put a lot of faith in Bruce Pearl and Auburn and their elite defense. I think any team on this side could do it. It could be Auburn. Do I pick Auburn? Does Auburn upset UConn? Take UConn out in the Sweet 16. I, I want to do it. Something in my heart is telling me to do it. But can I just can I take UConn out like that, though? I, I just don't know if I can. I don't know if I can take UConn out, especially in the Sweet 16. Like, there's Final Four, but Sweet 16? <sighs> this is hard, man. This is really, really freaking hard. I gotta go UConn. I gotta, I can't, I, I don't know. How, I don't really, I don't feel comfortable picking against UConn this early. I don't feel comfortable picking against UConn this early. I'm going UConn. But BYU and Iowa State, I'm going Iowa State. Their defense is too elite, you know. And, um, yeah, I think their defense is too elite. And BYU, again, they rely on three walls so much. I got to go to Iowa State. Next, this bracket. I didn't realize how crazy I made this. I made this the West region. <laughs> One is out. Three is out. It's 2, 5, 9, 11. Michigan State, St. Mary's. Does Tom Izzo. Does Tom Izzo's team keep going on the run? Yes, they do. I, I can, I'm not clicking against Tom Izzo. Michigan State, number nine, makes it to the Elite Eight. Michigan State makes it to the Elite Eight. New Mexico and Arizona. Does New Mexico do it? Does New Mexico make the run and beat Arizona? They have the guards. Arizona is really, really good, though. Does New Mexico make the run? <sighs> I can't do it. I can't pick against. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I love New Mexico. And I feel like there's a really good chance New Mexico can do it and can beat Arizona. But I'm going with Arizona, though. I'm going with Arizona. All right, next region. Houston and James Madison. Now, this will be the ultimate one. If James Madison can take out Houston in the Sweet 16. Uh, I feel like one double-digit seed has to, make it to the, oh, has to make it to the Sweet 16. Is James Madison the team? They beat, they beat Wisconsin. They beat Duke. Can they beat Houston, though, is the real question. You know what? I'm going back. I'm, go I'm going with New Mexico. I said one double-digit one double team has to make it to the Sweet 16. I'm going to New Mexico because I'm picking Houston over James Madison. I'm picking Houston over James Madison. I feel like one double-digit team has to make it, and I, I'll put my faith in New Mexico. New Mexico is going to be the Cinderella team. Kentucky and Marquette. Now, again, this is where Tyler Colvick comes in. Because if Tyler Colvick is playing, I'm probably taking Marquette. If he's not playing, I'm taking Kentucky. This is all predicated if Tyler Colick is there. Tyler Colick is their leading assist. I think he leads the nation in assist. Like, he really is, is like that guy for Marquette. I feel like Kentucky has enough offensive firepower to where the first two games, they're going to be good. But once we get to this scenario, that team gets a really good team by Marquette. They're going to really have to lock in defensively. And I don't know how much I can trust them locking in defensively against a Marquette team, especially if they're fully healthy. I'm going Marquette. If Tyler Colick is healthy. If Tyler Colick is not healthy, I'm going Kentucky. But if Tyler Colick is healthy, I'm going Marquette. All right, last one. Utah State and Zach. Can Utah State, the eighth seed, can they keep it going? Can they make it to the Sweet 16 and get Gonzaga out of here? No. I'm going Gonzaga. I'm going Gonzaga in this one. I, again, I like their team. Ryan Nemhard, Graham Ike, you know, Anton Watson, they have a really good team. I think they're going to be a team that's going to be overlooked. So I think that's going to fuel them. Creighton and Tennessee. Again, I really love Creighton's team, man. I really like Creighton. I really like Creighton in this team. And, yeah, I'm going with them. All right, we're in the Elite Eight. UConn and Iowa State. The number one offense and the number one defense in the nation. Uh, now, this is where it gets really tricky. Because, I, again, Iowa State's defense is elite, but UConn's offense is elite as well. You know, so it's really going to be a ba the battle, the, the age-old question is offense or defense win championships. It's so hard not to pick against UConn, but Iowa State, man. Iowa State. If 
that defense is just so good. I'm going UConn. I'm going UConn. Next, Michigan State and New Mexico. Can Tom Izzo lead his team to the Elite Eight or to the Final Four? I'm going to say no. New Mexico State. I mean, New Mexico. New Mexico makes the run, and they go to the Final Four. Next, Houston and Marquette is an interesting one. I really love Houston. Calvin Sampson, they build, They have a great program over there. And again, this Marquette run really predicates on the Tyler Kolek injury. Because if Tyler Kolek does not play in this game, Houston-Kentucky is one matchup here. But if Tyler Kolek is healthy and playing, I'm going Houston. I'm going Houston to the Final Four. And then Gonzaga and Creighton. I'm going to go with Creighton. You know, um, I'm going Creighton over Gonzaga. I like the team. We're in the Final Four, UConn and New Mexico. I just realized we have two. We almost, we could have, if I would have picked Marquette, we would have had three Big East teams in the Final Four. That's crazy. UConn and New Mexico. Can New Mexico make the ultimate run? Can New Mexico take out UConn and go to the Finals? The thing also is I don't want to have two ones in the championship. One of those two teams, UConn and New Mexico, one of them, I don't like having two ones here. And meet up in the finals. Because realistically, when does that happen? Not really. You know? So, but also, I don't want to have, do we have a big UConn and Creighton in the championship game? I'm going Houston over Creighton. And I'm going, I'm going UConn and Houston. UConn and Houston is my championship. And the championship game I'm going Houston. I guess Houston beats UConn in the championship game. UConn just falls just short of going back to back. And the University of Houston wins a championship. It's my pick. Which is crazy because a couple minutes ago I was saying if can if Marquette isn't healthy, Kentucky wins. And honestly, Kentucky has a chance with their offense. But alright, there we go. There's my March Madness bracket. UConn and Houston. Two ones. I, I don't like that I have two ones in my championship, but that's just how it works. But, uh, yeah, that's me for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you enjoyed the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, all stuff like that. I really appreciate it. Really upset a lot. Join the membership. Um, I made a whole video about the membership, so if you missed that, you can go back and watch it. But, yeah, peace out, everybody. Have a great one.